Hello from Esper, and today we're going to show you how to use our provisioning tool, which simplifies the process of provisioning non-GMS devices. In this case, we're going to be doing it with a Juniper Allegro 3, which runs an ASOP Android 7.1.2 build. Very nice purpose-built device for field data collection, uh, very ruggedized. Um, and so a good uh, use case in terms of uh, provisioning with Esper. So why don't we jump right in and uh, we'll go to device templates. If you'd like to explore Esper and see these other areas, certainly sign up for a free trial at esper.io um, as well as uh, check out our docs and uh, look at our blog. So we're jumping into the template, which is the means for uh, the settings and rules applied during provisioning. Uh, we'll start out with compliance policy, which you can do after provisioning through our compliance po policy functionality. Uh, in this case, setting it up for kiosk mode, we're using a slimmed down Esper settings app with a password for access. Don't use that password. And assuming that this is going to be used by an employee that can be fairly trusted, allow full USB uh, camera, factory reset, uh, and leave a few other things off that you can check out through the trial yourself. So for kiosk mode, very simple. Just click on this kiosk mode. Uh, have an app that you want to start on boot to be the kiosk app with which in this case I'm using device ID, so a fairly pedestrian. And uh, you can also have access to Google Play apps as well if you set that up with a managed Google Play account. Uh, you can do wallpaper, not necessary in kiosk mode, and then uh, settings on the device. We'll have Wi-Fi on uh, with brightness and volume uh, set to our desires. Now we'll put in the group. Uh, we created the Juniper group already. This is adding IMEIR serial numbers if you provision with Esper Enhanced Android, which you should check out. It is true seamless provisioning, not just zero touch. So very nice for uh, provisioning a large number of devices. And then the preview here will update our template and good to go. So now we'll pull up the provisioner and let's get logged into that. So you can see how straightforward it is from that perspective where it really is uh, integrated with your endpoint. You can download a uh, Windows or a Mac version of it. And let's get our credentials entered in here. Mistyping a bit, but that's usual with uh, video demos. So just bear with me on that. And so now we're into our endpoint. Uh, first of all, the instructions to set up the device, what you would typically expect, be sure to connect it to Wi-Fi first, uh, and then become a developer, allow USB debugging, uh, and then connect it to your development computer and give it permission to uh, access. Already did all that, so good to go. And then we'll select the template. So you can see we're going into our endpoint, the same templates that we saw through the console are there. Uh, download the applications, device ID is the one that we're going to be using. And then next we select our device that we're going to provision. And uh, now we're starting the provisioning process. So this drop down lets you see the details associated with uh, doing the provisioning. Now a couple of interesting things about the uh, provisioner. Uh, one is it allows you to provision multiple devices at once. So in serial, you can do up to 32. Uh, and we're working on a version that will allow you to do up to 64 in parallel. Uh, so very efficient from that perspective. Um, and with that, you can do it via Ethernet, uh, through IP address, Wi-Fi as well. So uh, giving you multiple options. Uh, one good way to do it is just get a, a, a large USB hub that you can connect uh, multiple devices at once uh, to your development computer. So, Okay, there you go. Now we'll switch over to the device side. So over here, you can see that uh, Esper is installed. Uh, interesting note that this is a, uh, a portrait uh, device where it's normally landscape. So it's basically flipped. So landscape is the uh, typical view with it. And our agent runs in portrait, thus uh, it's set offset by 90 degrees. And as far as getting Allegro 3, you should check out uh, what Juniper has available on their website. Pretty cool stuff. All right, so this is a step where you have to give Esper permission to change settings uh, on the device. So that's required by Android. So we'll go back here. 
and we'll continue to provision. And now since we're going in kiosk mode, we have to let Esper be able to draw over other applications. So we'll set that up. And now there you are. There is device ID. Uh, it is set as uh, a kiosk mode app. Now you'll notice that behavior there. That brings up the point that you need to consider aspects of your application implementation to make sure that it works well in kiosk mode. And uh, we have a great blog posting uh, up on our blog site, blog.esper.io, that dives into detail on that. So now that we have a device provision, uh, we're going to go check it out under devices. And uh, here it is right here. There's a device ID. And you can see that we get information about the device. Uh, we have actions that we can take on the device, things like reboot, screen lock, uh, change the device settings from here. Uh, you get an event feed so that by user, you can see what actions were taken on the device as a log, which is very useful uh, for figuring out when things went wrong and who did what to the device. Uh, device graph, we have telemetry on 14 different uh, telemetry points available for you. Uh, apps is where you can uh, whitelist apps that are in ROM, uh, in addition to uh, install additional apps on the device. Compliance policy relates to the compliance policy that you saw in the provisioning template where you can define one down here and apply it to the device. Security gives you a status, uh, an assessment of the security state of the device all the way from low risk to basically rooted. We have remote viewer and you can capture uh, debug logs for use later. So, you know what I want to do is I want to put another app on here called CPU-Z. But this is uh, cool in that, well, we're in kiosk mode, so what are you going to do? Well, we're going to unpit it. So basically, we're going to go out of kiosk mode, and this is great if you're a dev or a field tech, that you can do this so that you can work with the device, and here you can see the Esper settings app is available for you. But what we're going to do is we're going to go and install CPU-Z. So let's set that up here, and you can see that the list of the apps that we've uploaded are available. We simply select the version and then install it on the device. All right, and you can see that CPU-Z is there. We can run it and we can check out uh, the hardware configuration, software configuration on this device. Very cool, very cool. Okay, now that we're done, I wanna go back into kiosk mode. Well, why don't we jump back over to ask Actions and we'll pin uh, that app, which is device ID, back onto the device and you can see, boom, we are back in kiosk mode. So all set, ready to go with that. Uh, and a very good tool in development and also supporting the device in the field as well uh, with the kiosk mode uh, pin unpin. So that's pretty much it that takes you through uh, how you can easily create a kiosk app uh, and provision an AOSP device using the uh, Esper Provisioner. And the uh, Juniper Allegro 3 is a fantastic device. So, you know, why don't we do one more thing on it? I'm done with this device. Let's wipe it. Yes, you can do the remote wipe. We're going to say, see you later, alligator, to the Allegro 3 and uh, have it provisioned for another day. With that, be sure to go sign up for a free trial on esper.io. Thank you very much. Talk to you later.